Welcome back. Yes, we're here again. Hi. We're going to talk about The Walking Dead Season 1 in by Telltale. This is a spoiler cast, so if you have not played this, I would suggest maybe not watching us. Unless you don't intend on ever playing this and going to the next ones and just kind of want to get caught up on what's going on. This is not a regular podcast, so if you want to skip this for spoilers, we're only covering this. So feel free to just erase this from your memory and from your podcast player. <laughs> but that said, stick around. We're going to talk and have fun. So first of Spoiler all... Spoiler time. Yeah. First of all, what did you guys <clears throat> think about the game? How did you like it? I loved it. You loved it? I loved it. This, this is one of the few games to evoke uh, an emotional response from my eyeballs. <laughs> Physical emotional responses. Yes, yes. It's, it's very, very strange. I'm, I wasn't yeah. sure what that, that salty discharge was coming from my eyes, but uh, it must have been raining or something. Very yeah. odd. So I'm not, I'm not a big fan of point clicks. Yeah. I typically find them like you're drudging through the game. The storyline's yeah. mediocre at best. So they don't have a good story mechanic to pull you in. They don't have good gameplay to pull you in. This had a really good story. Fantastic story. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough where I actually played through the first half twice. So, hey, it's solid. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I didn't like the gameplay part. So it, it felt like kind of a chore in some parts to play through some of the puzzle stuff. It's like, okay, that's too many steps. I just wanted to experience the story. But the story was really good. And it definitely invoked emotional responses for me. I'm not a crier. It didn't make me cry. But I definitely felt it. And I was like, whew. After it was done, I was like, oh, God. I got to play something happy for a second. <laughs> well, just one of those. That end, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, talk about oh, that when we get end. there. But, man, that end. Whew. That so, hit hard. So, in, in general, <laughs> um, you see, we occasionally in RPGs and in video games, you know, the love story, if it's not, you know, utter shit of, hey, Mario loves Peach, and Peach gets kidnapped, and Mario <laughs> rescues the cat kidnapped princess, and they bake cakes, or whatever Mario and Peach do. Yeah. Um, this is a love story of a very different kind. It's, it's not, you know, boy and girl, it's not man and woman. This uh -huh. is the love between, you know, a father figure and a daughter figure, which the vast majority of games, this is like one of the only games that actually delves into that. Yeah. What did you think of kind of the relationship between Lee and Clementine? Uh, it was, it was relatable for me because I don't have kids. So it was one of those where it's like, I didn't know what I was doing, like, or what I should do. And that was the good part of the game is it made you think, think about that. And the way she reacts to you. I mean, yes. initially, you're just thinking it's a game, just make the choice. And then you start to realize, like, her grimace when you do something. Or you yeah. start to think, is Clem around? Can I really do this? Yeah. And you start doing morality checks on what you're about to do based on, is she there? Yeah. But unlike something like Bioshock or Mass Effect where it says, oh, you did an evil thing. You get evil points now. <laughs> it's It's instead of that, it's... You lie to Clem and she figures it out, and you just you see her disappointment. Yeah, I think the art style really helps that come through. You understand yeah, you what the see, players are feeling. You can see the facial expressions, and once you get attached to the characters, you feel bad if yeah. you lied to them there, or if something but, you said made them like sad. In, in Mass Effect, I would be a complete dick to anyone for any <laughs> reason whatsoever. Like, there's an option in Mass Effect where you can uh, punch a camera woman journalist in the face. Wow. I was just like, yeah, fuck you, lady, and I punched her in the throat. Mm -hmm. That was fucking rad. But yeah. there was a moment in Walking Dead where I could totally wreck this guy, and he deserved it six ways to Sunday, but Clem was there. Yeah. So I held back purely because she was in the room. And one thing that it... I don't know how to take this. I liked it to a degree, but I also seen it as a cheap way of accomplishing what they wanted, where there's areas where you're only with Kenny. Yes. And the choices you make, you only make around Kenny. Yeah. But it's going to be guaranteed so that they can make people react the way they want that Kenny will announce to everyone what you did. Right. So no action is actually ever secret. You have to worry about what you tell different people and what if they might tell the rest. And I I felt that it was always a situation of they will tell the rest. So yeah. they, it's <clears throat> always this idea of initially I was thinking on the lines of who's around, 
But as it went, I eventually realized it doesn't matter who's around. Yeah. Everyone ha- is going to find in, out. In a dire situation like that, secrets are secrets until emotions run high and things get to be life or death. And then those secrets come out and you have to deal with that in that game. One thing not, not related to the story, but related to the way Telltale has built the game, especially the first episode and a half, uh-huh. is it, playing through it a second time gave me a new outlook because I, I knew going in, people will remember your choices. Yeah. Your choices will have you know a middling impact on, on the story. Sometimes no impact at all, but it will make you feel bad. Yeah. Um, and I, I knew the, how the game was structured up front. But in the first episode, literally everything you do, they preface with, hey, you're going to make, like a character will come up to you, you're going to make some hard choices today, okay? (laughs) Hey, listen, in this world, there's going to be some difficult things you're going to have to choose, okay? Oh, by the way, I'll remember what you did just now. Hey, Clementine's going to remember that. And it just, it keeps hammering this point home of, hey, listen, your choices matter. Everyone's going to remember it. Mm-hmm. You're a terrible person. Be upfront and honest with people or they will fuck you. Yeah. And I was like, guys, I, I get it. You can tell me once. You don't need to insult my intelligence by literally building, baking it into the story and saying, you're going to have hard choices to make. Right? <laughs> right? And then, like, 20 minutes later, you get to choose between a kid getting his face chewed off or, like, a 20-year-old getting his face chewed off. Yeah. Well, okay. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. This is one of the areas that you make a choice, but I feel the game ultimately doesn't really affect it too much. It doesn't well, affect it at a all. Lot of, a lot of the... Well... Because Duck always lives. To get to the yeah. point... To get straight to the point, yeah, a lot of the choices don't matter. The ending is going to be the same no matter what, pretty much. You're not actually... There's a couple of, there's like a couple of parts where the the plot line can split, where certain people survive, where others didn't. The Carly but or ultimately, dog thing. yeah. But ultimately, um, the narrative of the story pretty much the the same events more or less happen once you get to the end. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I don't think that it makes the choices not matter because the whole point is that these choices are hard decisions that you have to live with and that affect the people in that story. So it's less to do with how the end result ends up. It's more to do with how you feel about what you're doing the whole time throughout the story. It shapes the the main character that you're supposed to be into the kind of person that results from whatever decision you've made. I agree. This is definitely a a journey game and not Mm -hmm. a destination game. Yes, but I mean, I still, to a degree, and the, I, I understand the tall tale of what I'm about to say, and <clears throat> I understand that it doesn't happen. The one game who's tried to have, have it happen did the same style of Walking Dead ending and everyone shit on them, Mass Effect. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I like a forking story. I like a story where if I say she died and he didn't, it's not that the players substitute as each other, but yeah. those two players are two individual characters that will take the story a whole different way based on one being alive and not the other. Yeah. Like, for instance, if you keep Carly, you actually would do more dangerous missions because she's a sure shot. Where if you have Doug, you're probably be more conservative staying around home base because the dude's never used a gun. Well, you could do a different style of dangerous mission with Doug because, you know, he's... More the, the nerdy type, right? Yeah. He, he knows systems, he knows mechanics, mm. he knows electronics, and he, you could play the game smarter instead of balls out with Carly. Yeah. yeah. And then I would have liked, and at that point, maybe it comes back. Yeah. But yeah. I would like the some of the choices to have a more direct, immediate impact. Yeah. And then come go ahead and bring it back to the story you're trying to tell us. Right. I can see that. So, yeah, I mean, I, especially in the beginning, the choices don't matter too much really at Um, least at least i don't think you 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 do feel something i mean the first mm -hmm. time you get to pick between two people getting eaten i mean do you so okay who did you guys save did you save uh duck or or did you save the kid oh Uh, i guess i I guess i'm getting ahead of myself we should probably start at the beginning we'll go through through all most of the choices of the game and kind of discuss what we did in that in that uh situation but like I said before, I think more of the choices, what matters is how you feel when you make them, not necessarily what the, the end result is. But it would have been cool to see some like alternate endings and stuff based yeah. on that. 
but I understand that that would have made the making the game such a more involved yeah. undertaking. Oh yeah, just because of the main protagonist, uh -huh. it would have been so hard to have the having them make a big difference because his motivation would be gone. Yeah. And I feel that, I mean, you he's justified up until the point you realize he's crazy. And if you take that away, it just gets really weird. Like, why in the fuck is he even doing that? Yeah. And um, with, with too many branching storylines that change too drastically, it would encourage multiple playthroughs, but I wouldn't want to have to play through it again, personally, because of the gameplay. But yeah, I would look online and be like, "All right, let's look all the endings up on YouTube or whatever." So, and I mean, this is this is Telltale we're talking about. If yeah. when you have a you know a company like Bioware with the backing of a publisher like uh, Electronic Arts, mm -hmm. you expect your giant two hundred you know one hundred and fifty to two hour hundred hour three game long RPG space opera epic <laughs> to have an ending that boils down to more than three buttons in a spaceship. But with Telltale, a relatively small development studio, and this is really, they were a relative unknown uh -huh. until this game came out. This is their first big game with big properties and a big title that sold really well. Yeah. They didn't have the budget nor the expertise to pull off, you know, something like the Mass Effect ending should have been. Yeah. The, the multiple branching paths. So I get why they did it on a, you know, technical and budget reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, that reminds me, this game, I believe, Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe this was a console first, then port to PC. I don't know. Hmm. Because Maybe. I noticed some really wonky stuff on when I'm playing through that I did not notice when I was playing through on the Xbox 360. Yeah, there were a couple of buggy moments towards yeah. mostly the last couple episodes, it seemed like, from what I remember. But it wasn't game-breaking, it wasn't really distracting, but... Yeah, but it was, it was there, though. Yeah. It was just one of the it things that was a little weird. Sure. Well, you guys want to start going through some of these choices? Yeah, let's, let's break it down. So, let's run through some of the story. Let's see. The first choice was to leave day or night. So you so you run into Clementine, the little girl, and you... Well, she kind of saves you, really. Yeah. But you kind of... You meet this character. You you hear on the, the messages on the phone that her parents are pretty much guaranteed to be dead. So... She's holding out at her house, hoping they come back, and you stumble upon her after being attacked. Um, you play as a character that was uh, on his way to jail for murder. So his wife cheated on him. He ended up getting into a fight with the guy who killed him. He was going to jail. Zombie apocalypse, ha apocalypse happens. Ah, crap. He couldn't go to jail anymore. But he has a whole other thing. To how do did with. you like how that started? Oh, I brilliant. love that police car ride. I yeah, love that. Yeah, that was good. It puts you... Because, I mean, you're playing a Walking Dead game. You know there's going to be zombies in it, right? Of course. And, and it just starts out so plain as day. Yeah, like, okay, when is it going to happen? When's yeah. that moment? And and it starts you out... You're already interested and you haven't seen a single zombie yeah. yet. Because you're like, holy shit, I killed a dude. I'm going to jail. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Who am I? And they're right. giving you all these scenarios of trying to defend yourself or answer in a way where you try to probe what actually happened out of the cop. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, you don't know because, I mean, you're in the back of a car, uh -huh. right? You're, you've murdered someone you're going to jail mm -hmm. the stereotypical answer says you are some hard-boiled criminal who took some guy's head off because he felt like it right that's that's a stereotypical answer the reality is a lot more subtle yeah and that's that's what i like about it it, it puts you into this character and you're already invested from the start you know yeah. it throws away a bunch of preconceived notions and says all right this this is who you are this is what you believe in yeah it, it lets you get into the character easier mm. So you get attacked, you stumble upon the house, you meet the little girl, your first decision is to leave it day or night. Um, I don't know how, this didn't really make that big of a difference. No, it uh, looks like it, you add, if you go at night, I mean, you get really, an extra zombie encounter. Yeah, yeah, and it really, it's not, it's not important to the plot. So um, if you go through the day, you meet a couple of characters. If you go to night, you meet a slightly different set of characters. But ultimately you end up at one of these characters, Father's Farm Ranch. Um, so at that ranch, you've met a couple of people. You've met a 
How would you describe Kenny? Um, kind of a working man, sort of yeah, pragmatic kinda, family man. He's kind of like your stereotypical Southern father. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's a blue collar guy, fixes his own cars. Yeah, he's not afraid to work. He does what he needs to do for his family. He's very blunt. Will tell you how blunt, he feels. Yeah. He's he's got his opinions and he sticks by them. Yeah, so, honorable guy. Yeah, he, he's not a dickhead, but mm -hmm. he doesn't take shit. Right. And then you've got Sean, the uh, the son of the um, farm owner. He's, what, 20-something, probably? Yeah. Yeah. Seems like a decent kid. College-age guy. Yeah. So you go back to his farm. <clears throat> uh, it gets attacked, and you have the option to save either Kenny's son, Duck, the probably 10-year-old. Yeah. Not very smart kid, but he's got a lot of heart to him. Or... The Herschel's son, the farmer's son. Who did you pick? Who did you try to save? So, this is cheap by me. I've played okay. this part before. The first part, the time I ever played it, it was cut and dry. Go yeah. for the young kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, this time, I'm like, so I know how this played out the first time. Let's see how the other one is. See how yeah. this other one goes. <laughs> so, I saved Sean this time. Yeah. And by save Sean, I mean I tugged on him. He was stuck under a tractor and he still fucking died. Yeah. yeah. So, this decision didn't really... It didn't matter at Which all. Which one did you pick, Tom? Uh, I I did the same thing uh, as your first run through. Uh, uh, if you play Walking Dead by cold, cold logic, the young <laughs> kid is going to die. He's going to make noise. Yeah. Right. He he is not a valuable asset. Right. The older kid is a valuable asset. That yes. said, I have a heart and I'm uh -huh. human, so I save Duck. Yeah. Well. For two reasons, I saved up. For that, it's a kid. First getting into this, obviously, save the kids. Yeah. But even from a cold logical aspect... Kenny. Kenny is very valuable. That's true. That's very and true. I wanted to make sure I stayed on his good side because I wanted him to help me the most. So I was impressed with this. There is... Um, you can talk your way out of it and actually not upset Kenny. Because yeah. I've seen someone play this uh -huh. where they save Sean, yeah. answered wrong, and Kenny hates you. Yeah. I had Kenny to a point where it was agreed that we had a chance to save both. Mm -hmm. I went for Sean. He went for Duck. Okay. But he froze is why Sean died. So he doesn't actually blame you for not going for Duck. Okay. Hmm. Which I was happy with because I, I knew you were going to be stuck with him for the rest of the game. I'm like, dude, yeah. I don't want him pissed. Yeah. yeah. But either way, Sean ends up dying. And Herschel kicks you off the farm. You're off to fend for yourself. Um, at this point, I was guys. glad I made friends with Kenny, given that he's, he's the person you go off with. Um, you end up going into town and meeting another group of people after being attacked on the way in. Um, you get in there. Nobody knows who you are. You're with uh, Kenny, his wife, his son. And uh, they think Duck might have been bitten. So... You walk in, there's a huge big fallout. Um, Larry, a character who is... Such a dick. Oh, yeah. He's a prick. Okay. He's a, a very large, intimidating man with the worst temper. He's, he's such a dick. He's built like a linebacker. Uh -huh. He's got a temper like a firecracker. Yeah. And he's... The and he only way I can put it is he's like... Old dog, military, fuck the world, I'll get mine. Yeah. Right? The only yeah. thing I care about is my yeah. daughter. Yeah. And and fuck everyone else. So you get there, they think Duck might be bitten. Kenny and Larry are fighting over whether or not to basically shoot the kid, I think. Yeah. Or throw him out, I think. Or throw him out. Saying. Yeah. So um, you have a choice either to side with Larry, and obviously that wouldn't make Kenny very happy. Or defend Kenny and the kid. Um, ultimately, I don't think that matters. Either way, you make a decision. You get a plus or minus for Kenny's... Uh, your relationship with Kenny. Uh, a zombie interrupts the argument. And you have... Okay, so... And that's pretty much that the point? end of that. The zombie yeah. interrupts your arguments. Um, ultimately, you're with this new group. Because uh, Clementine tries to go to the bathroom. You yeah, kill the yeah, zombie. Yeah. And then it just has you do some general puzzling. Mm -hmm. And this is the point when you realize that some of the people in this group know you got convicted of murder. 
Yeah. And this is when Carly finds out that your parents owned this store. Yeah. And people start to realize your backstory a little bit. Yeah. So you meet uh, some new people. Carly is a uh, reporter. She's good with guns. Seems to be level-headed. You meet Doug, who is kind of kind of the nerd character. Probably not as uh, physically useful. Seems he doesn't really seem scared, but he's not right. as prepared to deal with it. Maybe yeah, he's just kind of going by the motions. He's technologically yeah. and they do a he's really, intelligent. They do a really good way to illustrate that. Yeah, they uh, there's a scene when you need to distract the uh, zombies. And he has a universal remote, and mm-hmm. he knows how he remembers the pro, uh, program codes for the TVs in the other building. Yeah, so you use that to kind of get around the zombies in the puzzle. So he's useful. Um, you meet, um, oh man, Lily. Yeah, yes. um, Ke- Larry's, Larry's daughter. daughter. Yeah, Larry's daughter, Lily. She seems to be leading the group. Worst leader ever <laughs> we'll get well, to that yeah <laughs> jesus christ and this is also a kind of a cool spot because this is where if you had done some things against kenny that you didn't like mm-hmm. you will find energy bars that you can give to duck and them to help lift kenny's opinion of you yeah and you also find out at this point that larry has a heart condition yeah because this is the initial time when mm-hmm. you need to find meds for larry mm-hmm. yeah so you know after after he you know, screams at you and then threatens to murder a kid. He's like, oh, God, my heart, my heart's giving out. And yeah. please, someone go find me pills. And you're like, yeah, sure thing. I'd love to. <laughs> I just, I wish I had the option of just eschewing the entire quest line from then yeah. on. I'd be like, oh, he, he's a prick. Yeah. Let him die. That said... That's Mass Effect Tom talking. <laughs> I have a daughter to look after now, and yeah. I have to set a good example, so yeah. of course I'll find you your pills. Yeah. So, what are we, like 20 minutes into the cast? Yeah, it's something like yeah. that. So, we'll kind of speed through a little bit, but... So, you get an option, you get attacked again, um, you have to choose. Do you let Carly live, the, the journalist, good with a gun, or do you let Doug live, the... Uh, nerdy, technological, seems like a good guy character. Who did you guys save? So the very first time I did this, I chose yeah. Carly. Yeah. And I told myself, you're going to choose different. Yeah. And then I saved Carly again. <laughs> <laughs> so so in looking in looking at the tree here, uh, and we will link this in the show notes, um, it looks like if you choose Doug, you have some additional choices where other people yeah. get wounded or... Uh, you know, you get the opportunity to chop someone's leg off, which is kind of rad. I chose Carly. Yeah. Uh, because I figured, okay, Doug's nerdy. Carly has a gun that she knows how to use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's choose That's, that. That was my logic, too. I, I chose to save Carly because she was good at the gun, and I knew that would be very useful. That said, if you were playing this as an asshole, it turns out Carly actually knows who you are. She knows your backstory. She knows your parents. Yeah. And you don't know if you can trust her yet. You've kind of got a feeling you can, but you're not entirely sure. Yeah. You can get rid of that problem. Yeah. You could save Doug. <laughs> yes, but... Later on, that doesn't matter. But... Yeah. She, but she exposes <clears throat> knowing in a very concealed, listen, I know, don't let anyone else. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't so a She was immediately deal. seen trusted. Exactly. Yeah. But if you're paranoid, mm-hmm. you yes. could just get rid of the problem. <laughs> that is, once again, Mass Effect Tom talking. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. So, so all oh, you of ended us up going were Carly, to... weren't we? Yeah. Which had more storyline choices because of that. Yeah. Um, these are mostly meaningless choices. You end up meeting a couple of people in the forest. You have an option of whether to leave this guy stranded or cut his leg off because he's stuck in a bear trap to save him. Uh, ultimately, he dies anyway. Um, and, but that is where they get exposed to the concept of all dead turn. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is pretty huge in this story because until then everyone in the group assumed that you only turned if you got bitten. Yes. Now it's if you die of anything, you'll which, get turned. That becomes very big at a later part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh let's see. That's the part you hold up at the motel, right? Yes. Okay, so you're you're held up at this old abandoned motel. Uh, you guys are starving. You're not doing that great. You could use some help. Um, a couple of people approach, offering to trade with you. These end up being um, two sons 
of a farm, a dairy farm yep. down the road. They offer to have you come help them. Um, and they said they were going to feed you. Give you, you can stay here. It's a nice place to be. Um, that doesn't go so well. <laughs> so, so let's let's talk about this dairy farm because this this is one of the things I really wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, How fucked up was that situation? Jesus Christ! This is a spoiler cast. I was so, suspicious the moment we got there, though. It seemed too good to be true. Oh yeah. So okay, you get to this dairy farm. They've got an electrified fence powered by generators. They've got a cow giving dairy. They've got fields of, of corn and crops. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone's starving to death at this point. Like, yeah. holy shit, these people have food. Meanwhile, they hint and you see there's bandits nearby, yet yeah. this entire farm is unscathed. Yes. Yes, everything else is shot up. There's bullet holes and arrows everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, you're trying to fix the fence, pull, you mm -hmm. know, walkers off of it, yeah. and you get attacked by bandits uh, who start yelling stuff that you're like, what the fuck are they saying? Yeah. Why do they hate these people? Uh -huh. And they say, "Oh, it's it's a trade deal gone wrong. It's fine." Um, and so, at one of your party members takes an arrow to a shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's okay. You know, pull the arrow, bandage him up, give him some meds. He'll be okay. It wasn't a knee, so he's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're we're not playing all uh, the scrolls here. Yeah. Um, so. After after that, they take him inside, like, oh, we'll fix you right up, honey. You know, perfect southern mother sort oh, of yeah. stuff. Hospitality. Well, while you go and help out with the farm. And that's where things start to get suspicious. So they're preparing dinner. Um, everybody's excited to finally get fed. And you go exploring through the house. Not really supposed to. You're not supposed to, but you're going to go wash your hands. And you go take a look upstairs, you find this secret area. Oh, that's a door to a room. And you hear something in there. Turns out your wounded friend has his legs chopped off. And that's what they were making for dinner. They were... So fucked up. <laughs> cannibals trying to survive by eating other people that it, they felt weren't going to make it anyway. This is why the bandits hate them. Because they eat the bandits. Yes. <laughs> and it's also a very awkward thing with the your next part in the story because how do you go about getting Clementine not to eat human while trying to maintain the edge and jump on we know what these guys really are let's not expose it till we know we can take them yeah oh you you played that game I was I ran downstairs I and I said Clementine don't eat it see, that's what I did and then but... they're like what what are you talking about and I'm like these dudes are eating dudes <laughs> you're <laughs> eating human meat <laughs> see, everyone that starts is... puking yeah that's... duck says dad what did I eat I'm like, oh fuck this yeah. isn't good so that's and what I did I did that too but I mean I feel that's the worst possible thing to do well yeah but you're freaking out at that point yeah well, I mean what so... are you gonna do like Clem eat human meat and get out alive yes are, are you gonna get out at all though because I mean they've you, they don't know you know. And they're That's perfectly fine for you guys right now. But they know the guy, grab it. your guns and shoot him. One of your party members is missing. No, 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 no. She said he's upstairs resting. Uh -huh. Very tired. Sure, sure he's resting. <laughs> yeah, sure he's, he's resting on the floor without legs. But eventually, that's all you can do. <laughs> eventually they will find out. They yeah. have to know that you will find out eventually when yeah. your buddy doesn't come back. Well, and that's what this next part Either is. Either way. You're yeah. putting it the storage. It gets exposed. There's a big fallout. You get locked up into a what is that? Like a, a meat like storage, a meat locker. A meat yeah. locker. You're trapped in there. It's you, Clementine, Kenny, um, Lily, and Larry. Yep. So the family is holding Katja, uh, Kenny's wife, and Duck, his son, basically hostage while you're in there. As well as. Oh no! Yeah, that's it. Because the guys basically did yeah. the survivor from earlier is not in this scene. So yeah, they are back at the yeah. hotel. Yeah, yes. him and Carly, and yeah, which is another there. smart design by them, where yeah. your decision doesn't directly rep or happen in uh, some of the story. Yeah. yeah. So Larry has a heart attack in the meat locker, um, and he's they not, may not be he's dead. not breathing, but it's not looking good. Yeah. Kenny says, we can't be locked in this meat locker with this giant dude if he turns into a zombie because he died. 
we have to kill him now and make sure that doesn't happen. What did and you choose? So, so you have the option of so smashing you're, his you're head killing with a salt block. With a salt you're block, you're killing this. She's right there. It's her dad. Or she's, she's or trying you can to help with CPR. He might be okay. If I'm in this situation, and this isn't Mass Effect Tom, this is any Tom. Yeah. I'm not giving CPR to a guy who could possibly turn into a zombie. I don't want zombie mouth on my mouth when he <laughs> zombifies. Well, because then that is his mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah he's, he's going to tear me to shreds right there. Especially a guy that big. This guy yeah. is like linebacker sized. Yeah. There's no way. I smash the head. Uh, what did you... Smash the head. Wasn't even close. Yeah. Wasn't even close. I smashed the head, which was interesting because at the end of the episode, uh, more people didn't smash his head. Yeah. It was like a pretty big percentage of people didn't do it. But then Kenny really but, dislikes But him. when that happened, I pretty much assumed he was dead. So that's, yes, that's one thing I wanted to talk about with this game. When you complete an episode in a season of Telltale The Walking Dead, uh -huh. they show you the breakdown of this percentage of players made this choice, yeah. this percentage made I this that choice. A lot. It's that fantastic. Cool. Unless you're running it in big picture mode on Steam, and it would not load for me. Oh, that sucks. I always had to go start, exit to menu, and then just jump to the next chapter. Damn. But either way, I think the same outcome. Uh, it's just influence. Either way, Kenny is going to kill him. So either you agree to help kill him, or you don't agree, and Kenny does it anyway. He freaks out, smashes his head open. Kills Lily's father right in front of her and in front of Clementine. Um, so that's that's good. Yeah. So it would have happened anyway, but it affects how Kenny perceives you for sure and Lily by far. Well, I mean, you kind of kill her old man. Yeah. yeah. So you you end up escaping the meat locker. Um, you're sneaking through to try to rescue Duck and Katja. You have an opportunity to kill one of the farm brothers. He gets hit with the bear trap, and he's provoking you, and you can either kill him with the pitchfork, or you can leave him there uh, with the bear trap. Did you guys kill him, or did you leave him? This is one of the regrets I had on this playthrough. Yeah. I killed him. I killed him, too, and I did regret it, because Clementine was right there. Yep. Absolutely regretted that move. I hastily chose. I, I didn't think about it. It got through. I ended up killing him, and as soon as I hit it, I'm like, oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we're going to have some differences in yeah, these playthroughs. Yeah, you didn't kill him? I didn't kill him, but it's not because Clementine was there. Yeah. I figured this dude is hunting humans. He's eating humans. This is probably one of the most despicable people I will meet in this game. Yeah, he deserves it. I think stabbing him in the heart with a pitchfork is a little too fast. It's yeah. a little too easy. I want, to, I want to leave him there to sit in his bear trap and get torn apart by the walking dead. Yeah. Or they would have sawed his leg off and ate him. Yeah. Which would have been yeah. fitting. Yeah. I mean, e either way, I just I uh, didn't want to give him that nice escape. Yeah. And I think at the end, most people didn't kill him. I think. Or they didn't know. It was the, the thing at the end said, did you kill both brothers? Because you have an opportunity to kill the other brother as you come outside. <clears throat> uh, did you kill the other guy? No. I left him. I left him, too. I, I left him. Okay. Because you, you see that the, point, the dead walking yeah. towards him, yeah. and, and it's it's one of these cinematic moments, because everything, you know, it's pouring down rain, there's a thunderstorm, the mm -hmm. walking dead are closing in on your position, and you're getting into a fist fight with the dude who just ate your friend. Yeah. And you have the opportunity to finish him off with your bare fists like a man. <laughs> and you can either leave him there sobbing, because, uh, by the way, right before this... You have the opportunity to... Well, I guess she dies anyway, but you kill his mother. Yeah, the mother by, of the farm. She's, she's holding you at gunpoint, and you keep stepping towards her very slowly, but deliberately, and she keeps backing up up these stairs where your buddy with his legs cut off has just turned into a zombie. Yeah. And he's trying to grab at her, and you just you sort of bait her up the stairs yeah. until he finally grabs her and yeah. finishes the job. Uh, so, but you, you tell him yeah. that, and... Uh, he freaks out and just sits there in the rain, getting eaten by zombies as you walk away. Yeah. So epic. So you, you save Kenny's wife and son. You guys make it out without... You end up losing Larry. And uh, I keep forgetting his name. The guy who got his legs chopped off. Yeah, I forget his um, name. He wasn't a very big player. Yeah, he, <laughs> he was a new... 
You they, picked him up just for this chapter. Yeah. yeah, you literally have this guy just so we can get eaten. By humans, mm -hmm. not by zombies. Yeah. So we all didn't kill the second brother. Yeah. Correct. So you're walking through, you guys narrowly escaped, <clears throat> you're still starving. Uh, and then all of a sudden you guys just walk upon this car. It's a station wagon. Uh, the door's open. The keys are still in the ignition. It's beeping. Seemingly abandoned. And there's all this food and supplies in the back. And you have an opportunity to loot the car. I... I didn't. I you would have. have. Nope. It makes so much sense to loot that damn car and take yeah. everything there. Uh -huh. And everyone else does. And I was about to. Yeah. You, uh, on this playthrough, I'm like, well, I didn't do it the first time. I'll do it this time. Yeah. And then Lee looks at Clem, and Clem, like, just shakes her head. She says, just, this no, this, this isn't ours. Yeah. About we, half the group didn't want to take the stuff, and about half the group agreed that they should take it. Yeah, and it makes so much sense to take it, and I yeah. was going to. It's but... an abandoned car with the doors open. Somebody probably ran out in a hurry, getting attacked. It ran out of gas. But, but the way this game doesn't sets think... up, you yes, know right. it's there for a reason. You know yeah, it. you know it's gonna be. Yeah. But apparently, either way, you either decide to loot the car, everybody takes the stuff, or you decide not to, and it, the other members of the group end up taking it anyway. So either way, you loot the car. Which, when you get to the end, you had to loot the car for the end to happen. Oh, uh, the um, camcorder! I love that. Yes. You get to see that actually the. Uh, <laughs> The bandit that you killed when you're scouting with the brothers was actually protecting Clem. Yeah. So you killed the only good bandit. <laughs> uh, some more inconsequential choices. Not that important. Here, that's the big one right here. So later in that chapter, you get to a train or you get to an RV. You got the R or the RV's at the hotel. Yeah. You get in the RV because you get ambushed and you have to go. You get, you get ambushed by bandits. Uh, uh, Lily believes people have been stealing supplies. So there's tension in the group with her. She's, uh, her, her dad's dead. She's not mentally in a good place. She's starting to get paranoid. She's starting to freak out. Uh, her and Kenny have been arguing a lot. Uh, both of them want to run the group. And they're just butting heads like crazy. And there's a lot of turmoil within the group. Uh, you get attacked by bandits and you have to leave. Uh, so you all jump in the RV and leave. RV eventually breaks down. Well, gets stuck on a walker. Yeah, it gets stuck on the walker. You guys get out. Uh, things get out of hand. Lily starts accusing either uh, Carly, who we saved, or Ben, the, the new guy that we picked up. Uh, she starts accusing them. One of those two has to be the one that stole the supplies. Uh, this they can't stay with us. We have to abandon one of them. Uh, things get really heated. And then Lily shoots Carly in the face. Because, you right know, that's, that's a rational Jeez. thing to do. Yeah. When you're making wild <laughs> accusations is to shoot the person in the face. Yeah. Which, which, by the way, she wasn't wrong. It wasn't Carly, but she wasn't wrong. To shoot him? No, I, no, she was wrong to shoot him, but her About accusation. Somebody, yeah, somebody was somebody stealing. Somebody was supplies. stealing. Well, because you find that out. Yeah, yeah. Before later you, on. No, even before you do that. Because you remember, uh, Lee finds yeah. the stash. Yeah, right you find that somebody was giving the bandit supplies so they wouldn't attack him. Uh, but, um, that ended up getting cut off. So she kills him, and then you're left with a big choice. Yeah, so she kills Carly. You're left to... Well, a seemingly big choice, because yeah. it actually doesn't matter. And you're like... True, but... You can't do this. It's it murder. Big. And she's like, well, what about Lee, the main character? He murdered somebody back then. <laughs> and then you had an opportunity to go around and tell the people about your past and whether or not they'd trust you or not, which I did. I pretty much told most of them. Yeah. And they're like, well, it doesn't matter what happened before. It matters now, and you can't just be killing people like that. So you have a choice. You either bring Lily back in the RV with you, or you leave her behind to get eaten by zombies, and you guys continue on your journey in the RV. What did you guys do? I left her behind. I left her. I didn't need that drama. She, yeah, she was too... <laughs> At some point, are we going to stop playing this shit? <laughs> she, she, she murdered one of the people out of paranoia and irrational decision. <clears throat> so what the, I'm hearing... The murder itself was the reason. 
what I'm hearing is if there's a zombie apocalypse, we all three could like be in the same group because we're not going to yell at each other and we're going to kill the old dude with the salt block because it's the right <laughs> thing to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I was worried about uh, throughout the story because I didn't know what was going to happen about Larry being a liability because of his temper eventually. Yeah. So he ended up dying anyway. And then Lily went crazy. And this was an opportunity selfishly and cold heartedly to get rid of her. And she killed somebody, and that was once a member kills another member of the group that isn't bitten, hasn't tried to kill anybody. Yeah, that no. The funny <laughs> thing about this is, is this is one of these. Regardless what you say, uh-huh. it guides to the same spot with the same point. Uh-huh. But after looking at the flow chart, when you say no, she essentially ends up with the RV. Yeah, she and then steals you guys the RV. are stranded. Yeah. So, Which if you saved her, she part. steals the RV, or you guys go on the RV. Um, that was a really important decision, I think, as far as just the decision itself, making the decision. Yes. And it, it teaches, it. I think it teaches Clem a very important lesson yes. in the story, which yeah. is, even though the world has gone to shit, and there's no logic or reason in what's happening, we still have a code. Yeah, we we still believe in you know maybe not the rule of law, but yeah. at least in not being complete pricks to each other, yeah. not it's, being psychotic. It's like Straight the D and D chaotic good. Yeah, where exactly. Fuck the laws, be a good person. Yeah. yeah, and and she's not a good person, so she doesn't get to hang around us anymore. Yeah. And then this leads to a pretty big story <laughs> plot where you get back in the RV, you're driving away. They tell you Duck was bit. Yes. Kenny's son, Doc, is bitten. Uh, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> support yeah that's kid. a really big deal. And uh, you end up finding a train. You meet a new character, Chuck, who is a homeless man living on the train. I love Chuck. Yeah. He seemed, at first, you're, he was kind of creepy. Like I, I wasn't sure about he's, him. He's a he boxcar up, yeah, hobo. He of ended up actually creepy. being a good dude with a lot of wisdom. I didn't find him as creepy. Were you honest with him on the very first appearance? Because yeah. he asked you immediately, did you take anything from yeah. this boxcar? Yeah, I was yeah. honest with him. Yeah. Yeah, he says, yeah, I took the map. He's like, oh, yeah, I don't need that. Go ahead. Yeah. And I was so like, okay, this guy's going to be okay. He ends up being a level-headed, kind of wisdom-filled character. Which you, you end up think. liking a lot. I, I like the way this game takes, you know, the some stereotypes and turns them on its head. Yeah. Like, you know, Chuck, he's a boxcar hobo. He's going to be uh, nuts. Do you see a bottle of whiskey in the, the boxcar with him? You're like, okay, this dude's been living here forever. Mm. He's nuts. Yeah. He's got to be a raving lunatic. Yeah. But he's still alive. Yeah. He ends up being probably the most level-headed guy in this in the entire game. season. Yeah, it does. Except so, for his willingness to get drunk in the face of a really bad situation. Yeah, well. Eh, I mean, you but win some, you lose some. He does start giving you wisdom about Clementine and how you need to... You can't treat her as a kid. Yeah. Which, until this point, I pretty much was... Yeah. Not knowing any better, but in a situation like this, she's no longer a child. She needs to learn how to defend herself. She needs to start coming to terms with what's actually happening. You can't be, like, sugarcoating things, lying to her, trying to make her feel better, that kind of stuff. No more blind leading. You need to let her know what you're doing. Yeah. Cut her hair. Yeah. So until this point, were you guys straight up with Clementine, or were you... I was hesitant. Uh... A little bit of both. I tried to take most of the, the dialogue choices that were not necessarily the harsh way to say the reality, but the probably not kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was never abrupt. Yeah. The only thing I, I ever danced around was her parents, yeah. where I always ducked it. I would always yeah. be like, uh, maybe. Yeah, we might, we might go look for them when we get to the place that they were supposedly at when they got killed. That kind of stuff. I, I played it the way you did. Is mm-hmm. is I was I was very upfront with her. Yeah. But same. When it came to her parents, you know, do you think they're still alive? Yeah. They, they could be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I mean, no, probably I not. Hope, I but, hope so. Yeah. That kind yeah. Of stuff. It was never. So, I never give her the true probability because probability is like, yeah. dude, you're fucked. fucked. We all think alike because yeah. we're all basically on the same page on all this stuff. <laughs> so anyway, Duck's bed. He's getting <clears> really <throat> sick. Um, he's gonna turn at any moment. Uh, you you talk with Kenny and you decide it's best. You have to shoot Duck. He doesn't know the family doesn't want him to turn into a walker. They want to make sure. Uh, this was the first part of the game that really hit me. 
emotionally. That was such a sad sequence of events. Yeah. I was just like, oh, oh, God. <laughs> well, you hear so, the gunshot. Yeah. So and... you go into the woods uh, with Kenny, his wife, his son, to kill his son so he doesn't turn. It's what has to be done. Everybody agrees that it has to be done. Uh, I think you have the option of either you shoot him or Kenny shoots him. Well, right? well, before well, that, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, before, but right. you make that decision before you go into the woods. Yes, so you decide yes. no, no, uh, parent no parent should have to kill their kid. I yeah. was going to shoot the kid for him. So you, uh, they go off to, you know, have a moment with them alone before you go and you know, in back in, into the forest with them to kill him. And you hear a gunshot, and you hear, no, from Kenny. And you walk over, and you see Kenny's wife had shot herself because she couldn't handle it. And his son was still sick, about to turn into a zombie over in the corner. And you see Kenny break down. I couldn't even imagine being his situation there. That was so hard. What the fuck? Your kid's sick. You're about to have to kill him. To put him out of his misery. You're already losing a child, which I don't have any kids, but I know that that's like the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody, basically. And I like... And your wife killed herself. That, so, just I'm going to jump a little ahead, not to actually push the conversation, but to a point to hear I like. Yeah. Kenny gets really dark for a long stretch in this yeah. game after that. Yeah. But there gets to be a certain point when he pretty much says, she fucking quit. Yeah. She needed to think, I needed her, and she fucking quit on me. Yeah. So, wow, that sucked. Yeah. I, so, in, in my second run, I did expect it. Mm -hmm. It was still an extremely mm -hmm. emotional yeah. moment in the game. And then even after that happened, you still had to sit there and shoot Duck in front of Kenny. So Yeah. The, the, the first, the first run-through, yeah. oh, I bawled. <laughs> I cried like a baby. Uh, I, I had to stop playing for a couple days. So I'm like, what, what the fuck? Yeah, that was tough. That was... Because it's it's not like it's it's different if you're the player and this shit happens to you. Yeah. Right? It's it's very different, but the whole way you play the game, especially with Kenny, you meet these people, you actually give a shit about these people. Yeah. Cause I Kenny was great. Mm -hmm. He was my buddy, my companion through through the darkest of times. Mm -hmm. You have his back. They set you up at the beginning of the game. To yeah. morally want to back him, yeah. so that you're inclined to back him the rest of the way through and build this bond. Yeah. They did that on purpose. The very yeah. first thing was save a little boy or someone else, yeah. which morally more inclined to save the boy. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. is he bit or is he not fighting against Larry? So two of the very initial decisions, they know they're going to get you. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're intentionally playing as an asshole, they know they got you. Mm -hmm. And and then to watch someone you care about go through that sort of torment yeah is just insane mm -hmm. I, I when playing this for the second time i thought to myself wow so mass effect 2 was really powerful because the people you had come to rely on and the people you had rapport with these people that you had spent you know 100 hours with thus far mm -hmm. some of them died but yeah. what what if it wasn't that? What if they didn't die? Mm -hmm. What if someone close to them had died? What if you had to watch them go through this the same torment that Kenny did? I think it would be way more powerful. Yeah. Because watching Kenny go through that was... I, I think it would... is harder than maybe watching Kenny die himself. Yeah. So, you end up... Um, getting to Savannah, the town. Well... There's a little bit. You meet two more people. You get yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah you, you get stopped. You meet two more people. Uh, what were their names? Uh, uh, Omid. 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 Omid and uh, Krista. It's and Krista. then, yeah. little thing, they jump on board. They come with you. Omid breaks his leg. Yeah. And then while you're in the train, you find out the walkie-talkie actually works. Yeah. And Clem has been talking to someone. Yeah. And you have no fucking clue who it is. Yeah. And he seems to know about her parents. And then and right after the, that, the episode ends. Yeah. It, Holy shit. This is what? where I stopped playing the first time. Yeah. yeah. So you end up going into Savannah. Um, it's just overrun with zombies. And it turns out there's this little... Uh, 
a civilization of people called Crawford. And these were people that all banded together in Savannah to survive. But they're not exactly looked highly upon by most of the people. So they were casting out any wounded, sick, elderly, or children. They were cutthroat. We're here to survive. Morals don't matter anymore. If you're not useful, you get kicked out to the streets to get eaten. And the game drives this home by, at one point, you're forced to scavenge for some stuff. Yes. You find tapes. Yeah. And you find that a woman was told, get an abortion or you have to leave the colony. Yeah. It was severely fucked Very up. Very cutthroat, yeah. And then, did you guys get the additional tape? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, there's an additional tape you can get. And with this, um, it's the same line of finding out about the abortion, but you find out this girl that you found who's helping you in Crawford and through Savannah, you find out why she knows so much about Harford or Crawford. She was going there, um, having sex with this doctor to get medication for her sick sister so that she can hide her and keep her in Crawford stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. The, the whole situation was just fucked to hell. Yeah. So... You end up meeting these other people that have survived in Savannah, <clears throat> cancer support group. One of them's a doctor. Um, and you guys decide that your only way out is to go into Crawford because they have the supplies you need. They've siphoned all the gas from all the cars. Anything useful is in Crawford, basically, in that whole city. And to get out, you're going to need it. So your, your whole plan is to get this boat up and running so you can leave Savannah and find a safe place. So you have to go to Crawford. And you have a decision to make. Do you take Clem to Crawford with you so she can help? Or do you keep her in the safe mansion while you guys go to Crawford to protect her from the obvious dangers of going to Crawford? I left her. I took her with me. Oh. I left her. I took her with us because of what um, Chuck said on the thing. Is that she needs to start getting used to what's happening. She had started to help out a little bit up to that point so I didn't want to disappoint her further I thought bring her along and see if she can help how did that work out for you uh, it worked I mean I see she actually saves uh, Molly which is a new character that comes in the plot yeah she ends up saving Molly at points uh, did... Molly ends up leaving anyway later yeah. on but she's not that important of a character to you Tom you left her just like I did you leave her a gun Yes. Okay. As did I. Yeah. Okay. All right. So on on the train uh, with Chuck, you know, after he tells you, "Hey, cut her hair, teach her how to defend herself," we did the whole gun training thing, and then I cut her hair and told her, "You know, the world is a dark, scary place. You're gonna have to be prepared for it." Now, I figured she's had training, right? It with there was a situation where Clem needed to use the gun, and mm -hmm. she did so appropriately. Yeah. I figured you have the training; you've used it before. Yeah. She's got a good head on her shoulders. Yeah. Because the person it. she's left with is Ben, who is the, what, like a, he was like a college kid, he's kind of, he's kind of skittish, he's kind of wimpy, skittish, um, he's not very useful, basically. So, he was the one that was supplying the bandits earlier on in the story, and he's basically was the reason that Kenny's son got bit if you go by the, the butterfly effect sort of chain of events. So, um, you guys try to find a way to escape. Um, I feel like I'm skipping over something. So, so you um, get all the supplies from Crawford, you come back, the boat's gone. Right? Yeah. No, no, no not, yet, not yet. Oh. The boat's not gone yet. You're on your way back from Crawford. Yeah. And the thing that Lee, or that um, Kenny told you about the boat is it won't fit everyone that's currently with you. Yeah. That is a big key point here. Yeah. That help they tell you before you have seven this decision. People, seven people and five spots in the boat. Yes. So two people got to get shed. Uh, one lady gets eight here. Yeah. So down to six. Yep. Um, and then what happens happens and you're in a situation where Ben is falling through a bell tower and you're holding on to him. Yeah, and Ben has been feeling a lot of guilt over everything that he's caused about Kenny's family. Um, he, he you're, basically you're hanging, caused a chain reaction yeah, of death throughout yeah, the group. Yeah. And he told he's Kenny this. Yeah. And 
Kenny went nuts. Yeah, he told And him. even before, he removed a hatchet from a door that was holding all the zombies back. Yeah. <laughs> so by moving that hatchet yeah. is the only reason yeah. he's in a situation where he's yeah. about to die. So you're, you're hanging on to Ben, and you, Ben's telling you, just drop me, just leave me. Uh, I deserve this. Just let me die. Uh, did you save him? The interesting thing about this choice is it's A, he's asking for it. Yeah. B, it's you and Ben, right? You yeah. can come back to the group and say, they got him. Make Sorry, yeah. everyone. And no one's the wiser. You would know. Yeah. But at this point, you also know that Clementine has made friends with Ben. She likes Ben a lot. Yeah. And at this point, you have found out that the game doesn't keep things secret. If you do yeah. anything, it gets <laughs> yeah. to the group. So I did save him. Yeah. What about you? I saved him. Do you let him go? I dropped that something. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, so how did you feel waiting, about that? I was waiting on that. So I actually, at this point, I I didn't come to this revelation until right before we started this podcast that everything you did actually got reported back. Yeah. So I was hoping it's just Kenny and I. We're going back. No one yeah. else knows what happened. And then Kenny tells the entire fucking group that you dropped him. <laughs> and it wasn't because he was begging for it, but it was because he was the cause of all the evil. Oh, he ended Jesus up just... Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. Kenny fucked you. See, realistically... But he was trying to build you up when he said it, when in real, real life, you get back and Clem hears all this. Yeah, and you realize not oh. everybody thinks like Kenny does. And Kenny, like, at this point, is starting to fall apart, and he's just, he's getting his temp, his temper's getting the best of him. He's yeah. Just, well, especially. All he wants to do is get that boat, get out of there. And then you get back, and you find out, boat's gone. Yeah. It's gone. All that shit, to get all that stuff for the boat, and it's gone. <laughs> so, we saved him, we pull him up. Uh, you get back, the boat's gone. And... It ends up it was the people who helped you through the entire Crawford thing yeah. steal the boat. Yeah, the the cancer survivor group with the doctor. They ended up taking the boat. Sorry, guys, but we need this. Um, oh, well that that actually gets a little weird. You get back, that's right. It's all still there. Clem ends up disappearing overnight. You go to search for Clem because you think that those people have her because the guy said, give me Clem, she'll be safer with me. Yeah. She comes up missing. You go to find their society... They're all gone, and then you get back and the boat's gone with a note saying, sorry, we needed to take this. Yeah. So, um... So this game is really teaching me to kill everyone I meet. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the guy at the RV. And yeah. what sucks is during that time, you get bit. Yes. yes. So, so you're... Clementine's missing, you're looking for her, and you get bit. And um, you, you have an option here. Yeah, so... A pretty big one. So everybody knows Clementine's missing. Uh, you kind of assume that the cancer group took her. Um, and you have an option. Do you reveal that you got bitten to the rest of the group? Or do you try to hide it? I showed it. I showed right it. Right away. I did. I tried to keep honest as much as possible in this game. The, the way I figured it, the remaining members of the group are people that I have either completely saved their ass when they didn't fucking deserve it. Yeah. Or they're Kenny. <laughs> In which case, he's going to be cool with me either way, yeah. because I shot his kid before he got zombied. Yeah. But I figure, I figure so like, all... like, taking that burden away from someone gets yeah. you, like... Endless life points. Yeah. In, in your relationship status. Like, you could probably sleep with their wife afterwards and they'd be like, no, nah, it's cool. You deserve that. Yeah. <laughs> so we all showed the bite. Um, apparently, whether you showed the bite or not, uh, kind of influences how many people <clears throat> come to help you find Clementine. Huh, that's interesting. Because you're going to die. If you show the bite, everybody knows you're going to die anyway. So, apparently, if you oh. showed the bite, a lot more people came to help. Because everybody there agreed to help me. I asked for help to find her. Everybody agreed they because would Because they know you're probably not coming back from this. Yeah, so he's going to have to look after her and all that. And this is where all the like, dislike stuff from earlier in the game comes in. Uh -huh. Because if guys don't like you, they don't come with you. Yeah. So, apparently, we, we did well because everybody came with us. Yeah. Everybody come with you. Everyone came with me, but everyone was one less person. Because Ben's dead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben's gone. Um, 
I guess if you don't reveal the bite, people are less likely to go. Uh, apparently, it w there are situations where you're the only one that ends up going to find her. Wow. Just at, the end, like at, the end where, at the end, it shows us percentage and then like uh, pictures of the main character and then the number of people, like different people Man. that decided to or not go. Some of them, there, there are certain people that played through and nobody went with them. So that leads for the next big decision to be incredibly difficult. The next big decision is you're going looking for Clem. You've gotten bit. Some kind of bright idea. Maybe we can amputate the arm to slow down the effect. Yeah. How in the fuck do you cut off your own arm? Ooh. Because that is that an option. Would, that would have been an option, yeah. Because so even did, if you go alone, you get that option. Yeah. So did you guys cut your arm off? No. I did. You did? Yes. Really? So I, I've already read through this flow chart, so I know how that kind of affects things. Um, it, so, so why did you? If you don't, you know you're dead. You 100% know you're dead. If you do, there's a chance that you cut it off in time to prevent the uh, the virus from transmitting through your body. The, it's like if you ever watched uh, World War Z, mm -hmm. when Tom Cruise just cuts off and like bite, boom, instant. It was no thought, no nothing. It was the only chance. But he had already been bitten for a while before they got to that point. So I assumed that it's it's what's done is done. He, the the reason I didn't was actually different. I, I figured, okay, I'm bit. If I don't have an arm, that's I, I'm so much less effective at finding or helping Clementine. Yeah. I figured I'm, of mine too. I'm dead already. I'm going to need to help her in every way that I mm -hmm. can before I fully succumb. But you at least have other people, which was nice. Yeah. That's I true. wonder how this would feel if you were alone and cut off your arm. Yeah. Yeah. It would be very different. Well, I noticed on there too, there wasn't a whole lot of supplies in that room. I kind of figured if he was going to chop a limb off, he probably would have died there on the table from blood loss. That's true. But well, obviously, because it's a... a game and you're the main character, that wouldn't have happened. But... Wasn't the one lady a doctor? I mean, I know um, the one lady was a vet, but yeah, wasn't one of the two no. the sister? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. But I'm no, the really doctor sure. was the one you brought in to help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. So, that's right. so um, um, it allows you to be actually more healthy. Is what ends up happening. You could let him cut off the arm for a while. Yeah, but you're still hindered by the arm, right? Is that yeah, you, 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 a little bit. It, you, you when you're climbing up ladders, he kind of does more of a jump motion grab with one arm. Yeah. Oh, apparently the group they this is before they stole the boat. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So okay. Do you lose your temper with Kenny? That's probably not that important as far as decisions are concerned. Um, you end up getting locked in an attic. Um, narrowly escape, and uh, I don't remember what happened after that. So you end up going into another mansion where you see two people killed themselves in the bed oh, together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you're up in this attic, you're locked up there, you break through your attic into the next room, or next mm -hmm. building. And then now you're on the rooftops. Yep. You're going across the rooftops, and this is where the next big story thing happens. Yep. You have the CB radio that you're using to try to keep in contact with whomever has Clem. Yeah. At this point, you know it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't the, the guy that stole the boat. Yes. So you're just hunting for them, and Clem gives you a hint of something on the lines of where her parents were. Yeah. So you know you gotta you know, go you to you gotta that go hotel. to this hotel where her parents were. That's where she is. So you need this, uh, this walkie-talkie. And you're just walking down, and for some dumbass reason, you see a big dark hole in the ceiling, and everyone stands around, and you drop the damn walkie-talkie in the hole. Oh, I didn't get that at all. What? Because we saved Ben. So, oh. in our storyline, the walkie-talkie um, isn't as important. Uh, we're going to jump out of that hotel with the dead couple in it. Yeah. All onto the roof of the next one. Well, the balcony is all janked up. So everybody goes, and then Ben's the last one to jump. And when he goes to jump, the balcony falls. He falls down. And then you and Kenny rush down to try to save him or see what happened. Um, you get down there. Turns out he's impaled by the 
um, the balcony, and he's gonna basically die there. Wow. Yeah. 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 It's mine fucked up. Mine was there's this hole on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You walk up to it, and the walkie-talkie drops in there. Krista jumps in there to get the walkie-talkie, uh -huh. and then she can't jump up to grab your hand. And after jump, 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 a zombie comes. You see a zombie starting to come. Kenny jumps in, lifts her out, and then goes Rambo style on the zombies. Jesus. Oh, and then wow. he dies. He ends up dying in the darkness. Or he doesn't die. Or That's he doesn't die. That's not completely clear. Yeah. So in, in ours, you go down yeah, to yeah, save it's, Ben. It's, it's, same here. It's not clear in mine. Yeah. You go down to save Ben. You can't get him up off the balcony thing. Uh, Kenny basically tells you, you need to get out of here. I'll take care of this. Because he was going to, I guess, shoot Ben so he didn't turn. Um, so he basically, like, locks this gate on you. And you, it's showing you, from your perspective, you got the radio and Kenny's out there. You hear the gunshot and all the zombies swarm. And you see Kenny trying to fight him off and the zombies swarm in and you lose sight of Kenny. And then that's it. You assume that he's dead. But he might not be dead. That is true. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him in season two. So there was a question before this came up of whom do you want to have Clem? Because it's assumed you're going to die. Yeah. Who did you guys choose to look over Clem? Because uh, you can choose the two of are. them or you can choose Kenny. Or none. I chose the two of them. I chose Kenny. I chose Kenny. Because the whole family tie he already had. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Because you knew he would do anything to save Duck. Yeah, that's true. I figured if anyone's going to do anything to protect her, Actually, I think be Kenny. when I came up to that decision, I thought it was after we lost Kenny. I got asked it again. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot about we the first one. After we I don't lost know what Kenny. I said the first one. So, I might have said I needed to think about it or like put it off or something. Yeah. And then um, I'm assuming this is the same for all of us. At this point, you see the hotel. You have to go across this street sign. It breaks when you go across it. Yeah. None of them can get there. So they're trying to find a way to you while you have to go hack and slash through yeah. this fucking tunnel yeah. of zombies. So Omid and Krista, you leave behind. Tell them to basically wait for you. Because you were going to get Clem out of there, and then they could take her and find a family for her, or take care of them, take care of her themselves. Um, this pretty much leads to the last little segment of the game, where there's no more that meaningful decisions to make, right? So, yeah, there's there's none. So you, go, you get to the wrap you get to the hotel. There's this dude there. He knows all about you. Turns out he's been listening to that radio from the other side the whole time. He hears everything you've done, every decision you've made. Um, he ends up calling out a lot of the des bad decisions you made and how you're not fit to take care of Clementine. She deserves better. Yeah, and Clem he actually wants. tells him is how he's been hearing it all. She's been talking to him on the radio. Yeah. I, I don't uh, know if I like this, you know, God out of the machine narrative where, mm -hmm. you know, all of your choices were, were overheard by some random guy yeah. that you didn't know about before. But it ends up being that guy, he had a family. Uh, he lost a son, ended up having a daughter and a wife. And there was some turmoil between him and the wife. And the only thing keeping them together were the supplies. The supplies you took out of that station wagon you found abandoned was his. And that was his last hope of staying with his wife and daughter. So basically they leave him. He ends up finding them dead, zombified later. And he's just a wreck. So he sees it as your group was the reason that he lost his family. He was going to take Clementine and take care of her because he knows how. And he's heard all about the things they've done and how they're unfit to take care of her. And he's nuts. He holds her hostage. You end up talking to him. And that's where the pitchfork thing was about the only bad thing I did. Yeah. And it was just thrown at you. Did that yeah. right in front of her? And yeah, he did that and he talked about us leaving Lily back behind. Uh, so Clem comes out of the closet, hits him. Uh, you wrestle with him for a little while. Did you end up strangling him to death, or not? I think Clem shot him. Yeah, in, in my in my game, I. Fought with him a little bit. He got the better hand of me, and then Clem ended up shooting him in the head. Yeah, that happened on yours too. Um, I think I ended up shooting him. 
you ended up shooting him? Yeah. So I don't know what I did wrong with what maybe one of the quick time things I didn't I, get I all think the way. The the way I justified it, because I never killed a human in front of Clementine. Yeah. Uh, until this point. Okay. My justification was there's a psychotic man who kidnapped Clementine. Yeah. I will end you. <laughs> and clearly Clem was not there on her free will. She was no. locked in. Yeah, she rest. was locked in. Yeah. So I ended him. And so, he was talking to his dead wife's head in a purse. Yeah, he had his yeah, zombified bag. dead wife's head in his bowling bag, bo- uh, Forgot about bowling that. ball bag, talking to her. He was nuts. He was crazy. He ends up dying. You take Clem out. Uh, you find out that the zombies don't notice you anymore because A, you're kind of turned into a zombie. B, you're covered in the zombie yeah, shit. Yeah, so you cover in zombie blood. It's nasty. You guys walk through. Uh, your guy's really sick at this point. He's fallen over, passing out. Uh, you end up getting to this spot where you, the last, the last of the game is the very end. You uh, see Clem's parents. Yeah. So she oh, knows yeah. they're dead yeah. now. Yeah, she sees her zombified parents. That was a tough moment. Um, she, you pass out. She carries you into the safe place. Yeah. You have to instruct her on how to break into this room mm-hmm. and kill a zombie. Yeah. Yep. And the zombie actually almost kills her until she bashes his head in with a baseball bat. Yep. So you, she's forced into this position where she has to take care of herself. You're telling her what to do, but she has to do it. Uh, that was pretty meaningful. She ends up killing the zombie. You're sick like to the a, point uh, where you're going to die for sure. Is a security guard zombie. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lee asks, hey, you've got to handcuff me to this radiator uh-huh. so in case I turn... I'm not going to get you. Yeah. This was very emotional. Well, there was also a point in there where when you couldn't you instruct her to shoot you if you wanted. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so that happens after the handcuff. Get, she gets what she needs uh, from the guard to get to escape. You're chained to the thing. You're having your last conversation with her, and it's super sad and emotional. And that one, that was the second moment that hit me hard. Yeah. I was like, oh, God. The end of this game is so heart wrenching. So, yeah. <laughs> so, did you have, uh, did you tell her to shoot you, or did you tell her to leave you? I told her to leave me, and that she needed the bullet for later, since I was restrained. See, either either decision makes a lot of sense to yeah, me. Yeah, it does. There's no right answer here. Yeah. I feel that shooting you is emotionally, like, just, what the fuck? Yeah. At the same you time, you are her she, father right at now. At the same time, she did not want you to turn into a walker. She yeah, did not want, she didn't want us want to know that you turned into one of those things. On on one hand, yeah, yeah, she's she's killing you. But on the other hand, she's saving you. Yeah, right. She is. She's giving you sweet release from uh, the horrible eternity of being she, a zombie. And at that point in mind, she already shot the the guy. Yeah, she so, knows you're dead. And she mentioned that she's like, I shot the other guy. I can, you know. You two if I have to do this, I can. Didn't, you know, yeah. You no, both... no, I told her to leave. Oh. Really? I didn't want her to have to deal with that guilt of shooting. Same here. Yeah. I, I did it for two reasons. A, I figured she would interpret it more as saving Lee yeah. than killing him. Yeah. And two, at, at this moment, she has to leave me and go out on her own. Yeah. This needs to be the catalyst. <laughs> yeah. This needs to be the turning point moment where... Uh-huh. Where there's there's one moment in her life, and this is where she goes from being, you know, something to be taken care of mm-hmm. to a person that needs to stand on their own. Yeah. And I it, think that accomplished both objectives. That makes sense. I think at that point, um, I was kind of of the mind that those last events that had just happened moments ago were so traumatizing. I didn't want <clears throat> one more thing to make that specific chain of events to to crush her even more than what already had been yeah. done. So I saw it as a tough decision on her part, but ultimately it would cause her less pain. But I could see definitely what you're saying about um, that would be her saving you. Mm-hmm. Maybe that would have her have less pain later on, less guilt, or whatever. So I've, I know you haven't. Have you played the second episode at all? Second season? Uh, yes, but I didn't finish it. Okay. Uh, it's... It's good. They take a lot of the ideas from this round. And, and 
just to let our listeners know, I'm not going to spoil anything on the second season. This is just a, a <laughs> this is the season one spoiler cast. The, the blurry, cast. the blurry overview of the same thing you would you know assume after playing the first season. Does anything come out of the first save? Is there anything like that, like Mass Effect style? No, no, I don't. I don't think there's any save upload okay. in this um, okay. or, or, or continuation like that. So it, it's not like that. It, it, the plot is fairly structured, just like this yeah. one. Okay. Um, but the choices you make in the second one are harder. Yeah. I feel like. Wow. Um, not, not from a, I really care about this person, but shit, something could happen something <clears throat> that could really fuck up this group mm -hmm. or get someone killed unless I do something first that could get someone else killed. Oh. And and you need to make the decision between do I protect myself or am I being overly paranoid? Mm -hmm. And and they do a lot of cool playing with that. Yeah. It's it's interesting, but um the game definitely does have a lot of emotional impact. Um and you know there's there's no spoiler here if you've seen any trailers. Uh, you play as Clem. Yeah. So That's you that... you get to not only it, it, it's a passing the torch moment because right. now you're making the decisions for her. <laughs> but it's it's weird being the player as Clem because mm -hmm. you know here's here's a little girl that that you know essentially has grown up under your care in this game, and now you get to be her. So hopefully you did a good job. Yeah, and that I feel kind of takes away a little of the emotional connection. To me, a lot of this was Clem you care about. Yeah. yeah. When you're playing as Clem, you never care of your player character like you do the supporting characters. Yes. Yeah. For well, sure. it, it, it's reminiscent of real life, yeah. right? Right? <laughs> you, you know, there's... Everyone has the thought of, you know, what if this situation happens and a guy robs the bank and, you know, he's going to take hostages, but you can let someone go, yeah, I'm not going to let my wife get taken hostage. Yeah. Sure, take me, that's <laughs> fine. But, you know, I think that's a very human thing, a very empathy-driven thing. Yeah. For sure. But I think, um, all in all, game worth buying, worth playing, especially with the Steam sale. Yeah. Um... If you have the means, go and grab it. Uh, it's available on virtually every platform. Yeah. If you're listening to the spoiler cast, sorry if yeah. you haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to say uh, the buying news at this point. Um, yeah, hopefully you've already have it. Yeah, you hopefully this. you already have yeah. it. You've already played it. Um, if not, I don't think we've spoiled it. I mean, we've spoiled the plot, but there's a lot of little subtle things here and there, and yeah. definitely the more emotional parts of the game. Yeah, uh, you will definitely get something out of yeah. it, even if you haven't played it. But Very if you true. have played it, uh, send us an email. Let us know what decisions you've made and if they differ yeah. from ours or maybe you have some insight about your decisions that were different from ours that we would like to read for sure. We'd love to read the stuff on the next podcast. Also, uh, suggestions possibly for a next kind of game that we can do this with. Yes. Yes. This is something we would like to try to get going a little more often, kind of like a game club idea where as a community we decide what game we want to play through and then the next month we will have one of these and talk about this Have a spoiler game. cast, talk about our experiences with the game without having to worry about spoiling it for people that haven't played. We can talk about the events that happened, yeah, give choices, everyone, you know, what we thought, how it ended, what that meant. A couple that weeks of to stuff. a month, run through a game together as a community and as, you know, podcast host, and you guys tell us, you know, what you hated, what you liked, you know, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll read some responses on the air, take some Q&A, and uh, you know, generally break it down. Nice. Huh. So, yeah. I think that's all we got for Walking Dead Season 1. I yeah. think so. Just in time for Season 3 to get out there. Yeah. <laughs> all well, right. Thanks well. for watching. Email us your decisions that you made in the game. Let us know about it. And we will talk to you guys next time. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye.